Hello my dear friends, this is a Painty Cat, my name is Catherine. Welcome on my tutorial, today we're gonna paint a flower bouquet on a stone table. Also, we will create a fabric napkin with a lace trim. And I uh, wanna let you know, we're gonna paint with acrylic on a paper. More about what kind of paper and uh, about another surfaces for acrylic you can find on my youtube channel there uh, you can see a really short review and you can choose those type of surface you like more this is a demonstration tutorial a short one real-time tutorial that going uh, for two hours you can find uh, by following uh, links down below in a description box so here, in a demo version of uh, this painting, we will talk about main steps we have to follow. First, it's a background, of course. Uh, I recommend to you to check uh, previous tutorial with the pansies. It's have the same plot. Uh, it's also flower bouquet and there we um, have similar composition. Before, we were talking about a uh, background from light to the dark and here in this tutorial let's go opposite way, from the dark colors to the light. I love the both way, uh, in my view it's giving very nice transition color to color and basically if you're following from the dark to the light you have to mix dark color first and after step by step you get good looking background. I don't want to blend it too much, I like visible brush strokes uh, about a stone tabletop. Uh, in a previous one we were painting a tabletop uh, as a uh, granite here it's gonna be the same but it's a different type it's more gray and will have more dots instead of spots before dry previous layer first and with a sponge cover stone table with a uh, slightly visible stamps and also I did splatters and dry everything I've done on my paper Next, we have to give a shape to the table top. So the top surface on light, it's lighter and those that I can see on a side, I glazed with a deep color. When you're glazing, don't put in a glazing mix any white. If you need uh, less dark color from glazing, just use extra water. Yes, I used water again instead of uh, acrylic retarder, so you can see those visible brush strokes that I believe fits a uh, stone texture really nice. Uh, stone and uh, background uh, here in this demo I speed up a little bit because really this tutorial going for long in 25 minutes Trust me, we have more about to talk. And right now, let's go with the actual speed. First interesting detail here, it's a white napkin. And that's why I recommend if you use a paper for this kind of still lifes with a fabric, go for canvas texture. Because you will get this effect visible threads of napkin just because of texture of your paper or a canvas of course. First layer we go with just a clear white but the most important thing here it's a consistency. Consistency not watery at all. Some of acrylic can be watery enough even in a tube. So to remove extra water from acrylic you can spread white color in a big area on your palette wait a little bit maybe 30 seconds it will dry really fast and after you will be able to paint with a dry brush strokes about type of the brush here it's a flat uh, slanted brush I like it and basically try to follow natural lines of folds here and a fabric and this way this first layer already will create 
nice effects for future work. Take a look. Edge of this napkin already looking as their lace trim. And in the future I will just add more details, but still this layer will be visible. Next we have to form, we have to paint small vase. Uh, Color for vase, I'd say, have to be kind of natural, because uh, we have so many flowers here with um, lots of colors. Light pinkish violet, white and a deep violet lilac we're gonna include in uh, this bouquet. Each type, each color have some unique things that we need to remember about, you know, to create it, especially those white ones. So, vase gonna be simple enough, just uh, follow the common light direction, it's going from the top left corner and going to the right side, so right side of the base gonna be in a shadow and the left one gonna be in a light. Empty area on the center, uh, they're gonna be a leaves. Uh, by the way, take a look, uh, you can see here lines of a sketch. Sketch for this tutorial done already and available to download, so just follow links down below, you can find it there. Print it on a usual uh, letter size uh, print paper and it's ready to transfer. You can find really short tutorial about how to transfer sketches. In general, I used layer of graphite on the back side of my paper and I repeated all the lines so they printed on my painting. And on a sketch, I have already planned shape of the uh, green leaves, also shapes for future lilac bunches. And right now I already created green leaves. It's just a first attempt to it. Later we will add shadows and a light. But right now we have to work, we have to think about future lilac. I'd recommend to use uh, sponges, um, fresh sponge for each color. For white lilac, please don't use uh, gray, which is black and a blue. It's a really common mistake. Uh, white objects, uh, when they go into the shadow, they not uh, becoming gray or dark blue. When you will have the opportunity uh, to grab uh, the real bunch of lilacs, uh, try to look what uh, inside there, inside of the flowers. So there are tiny uh, stems and they are green. So for underpainting layer, for white lilacs. Please use just a green color. Next, mm, time by time I will clean uh, my palette because uh, for video I have to keep all my mixes visible for you. Uh, but for you, uh, my friends, I recommend to work on a bigger uh, palettes, big ones giving more space for interesting color experiments. And uh, personally, when I'm not shooting video, of course, I'm grabbing my big palettes. Next color, it's a uh, light violet, pinkish violet, but for tutorial I will call it a pink um, lilac. Colors can be so different. It depends on really on your own taste what colors you want to include in this bouquet. Uh, I choose deep pink and mixed it uh, with a bit of blue and a bit of uh, umber burnt for those lovely plum color. And the third color here in a bouquet gonna be a deep violet. For each color, when you're switching, grab fresh sponge. This way, colors will stay clear and very beautiful. That's it. 
we still have some spaces between these bunches, but I have a nice idea for it. Take a look on the brushes. I recommend to you flat and oval one. And the size of actual tiny flowers will depend from the size of brush you will pick. My brush from the set of uh, 13 different sized brushes with uh, the same shape, flat oval, and uh, from the set of 12 uh, brushes different shapes, you can find their kind of tiny flat oval brush. Uh, the most important to keep nice value for each bunch and uh, let's remember a light direction which going from the left to the right and imagine um, even if bunch of lilac not really round but basically as a very simple shape closest to bunch of lilac it's gonna be a sphere so we need to follow same order which a normal sphere have highlight mid-tone shadow and a reflection here on a bunch of lilac uh, these spots will be not that visible because um, bunch contains too many mosaical spots and petals but again, in general, we gonna have here everything the same as a normal sphere, simple sphere I have. So take a look, I'm following the left edge of the bunch with a light violet. I'm not going on a mid shade and on a shadow here. And just forget about reflections right now, we will do it in the very end of tutorial. Right now, just keep in mind light petals on the left side, mid tone petals in the center of each uh, bunch, and dark petals on the right side. This way, we have to complete all bunch of lilac flowers. They don't need to be too accurate. So uh, imagine some of them turned and you can see them only as a side view sometimes not all petals are visible so maybe some flowers really have a four petals but some are not they are not perfect and this way bunch of lilac will look natural if you will be too accurate imagine they put it one by one perfectly this way flower will look mm, too perfect as a plastic one so try to keep in your mind be not perfect uh, create a different twisted petals maybe mm, petals with uh, variations of colors you can notice probably that i'm mixing colors on top of previews Pink on violet, green can contain a tiny little bit of pink sometimes this way. Petals have a variations of colors and looking more natural again. This is the look we need, we going for, natural bouquet. Uh, we done those light side, so let's pay attention on a dark parts of each uh, lilac bunch dark color take a look on the palette there colors more visible for you very deep color and this way with a tiny touch I can put small petals not only on a dark area of bunch, but also in the center of a bunch, somewhere deep inside, there can be a deepest shadows, and it's looking beautiful because it's giving a contrast. 
between light white petals in the future and very, very deep inner center of the bunch. For green the same, for violet the same, for pink the same. No matter what color you're gonna create, steps similar and a tones similar, similar also. As soon as values done, we have to wait a little bit till all colors will dry and this time we have maybe 10-15 minutes to pay attention to our green leaves. Remember about light from left to the right and uh, we just have to put light colors on a top, on a top side of each green leaves. Green leaves on the left side will be lighter, on the right side darker. And this is a perfect for background we done before. Take a look. Right side, light background, but dark green leaves there. Contrast. Take a look on the left. It's a dark background, but very sharp looking, light and contrasted pointy little green leaves. It's a contrast again, so it's very catchy and it's giving a nice feeling of detailing. Green leaves are done. For the moment, later we will uh, return to the leaves uh, again for the final detailization, but right now take a look on our napkin. Uh, it still have only the first layer, which is color, and we have to harmonize this part to other parts of painting. About color, again, there is no gray, no blue there for value. White, which is no color, imagine white itself, that's mean object have no color at all. But in a real, that's mean this object contains all multiple colors that is have around. So you can understand what colors you need for shadows if you will take a look around your white objects, no matter what it is. If it's a landscape or bouquet or it's a face and a human have some maybe white color around the face, it's all the same. White, very reflecting. So for this napkin, just pick color that could reflect from it or give a color to it. Uh, I like this brownish green. I mixed it uh, from the umber and uh, green medium plus white plus a little bit of violet in it. I like this color, looking interesting. So I created main folds and uh, also I give a curved edge of the lace trim with a just flat oval brush. It's just a uh, print from it. Next, it's a lace trim itself. This way, yes, we have to detail dot by dot. So take your uh, very small brush, number zero, number one, and uh, yeah, we need to create this line with the dots. I created three lines, two with the bigger dots and one uh, with the tiny dots. And for natural view, first, we have to follow with any pattern. We have to follow of uh, direction of fabric, folds and all those curved lines. We have to repeat it with a pattern uh, also. And another idea. Uh, usually lace, it's not just uh, holes in a fabric, tiny holes. Uh, it's uh, some threads around each one. So there, thicker 
fabric or thicker stitch around. So you put a tiny dots of white color near each dark dots and near each dark lines, uh, pattern lines on your napkin. This way it will look really, really natural. As soon as uh, main shapes or folds are done and I'm happy with it, I can put deepest, deepest shadows uh, for the napkin and uh, on area under the vase. Vase still looking too simple. So uh, let's harmonize uh, this uh, area also compared to other parts of composition. Docker cast shadow under and I want to create more interesting uh, shape of the base. Just easy, very easy and small uh, areas with a similar distances between them. Uh, on the right side, vase darker, uh, napkin behind it lighter. On the left side, opposite way, napkin have to be darker than, than a vase. Vase here have a very active highlight spot, so just put more shadow color to the napkin close to vase, and this way you have a very nice contrast here as well and a tiny reflection on a base just looking pretty that's it <laughs> I like it next layer uh, I like napkins vase uh, already looking uh, kind of interesting in my view I'm not gonna put any pattern on it maybe on the next tutorial we will do vase with a pattern so let me know if you interesting to continue this uh, flower bouquet serial and the next layer it's uh, detailing for lilac color not white again <laughs> I know it sounds funny but that's true we gonna have some extra layer after with a clear white but right now highlight petals and for each color we have special color of highlights. Pink lilac means light pink, violet lilac means light violet, white lilac means light green again. One by one, this time we don't need to highlight all the light petals there, no, choose those flowers that looking the prettiest and uh, those you want to make an attention from your viewer so there put a highlights one by one be accurate don't be in a hurry and by the way we are almost done let me just complete this layer of light green on a white lilac and Yes, we can paint with a clear white. Type of brush, the same consistency, half dry. It's a tiny highlighting for the most beautiful petals, but not only flat brush we are gonna use for it. Pick up a tiny brush number zero and imagine you will go around other petals almost everywhere. Go with white there where you have a light area on each bunch, but for shadow parts let's paint colorful reflections. Again pink for pink lilac, violet for violet lilac and green for green lilac. Take a look, color right now not white at all and I put reflections in a shadow areas on each bunch and my painting done. I still have to sign it and remove a tape that fixed a paper 
to my working space. Don't forget to sign your own paintings because this way later you will understand and you will see your own progress more clear. And be accurate while you will remove a tape. I will do it with a hairdryer. If you still have any questions about this demo, uh, welcome on a real-time tutorial and also ask me in the comments. I will be very happy to see your own paintings following my tutorial. Please share it to me through the Facebook, Patreon and Instagram. Don't forget hashtag PaintyCat. Subscribe me here, we're gonna have more interesting tutorials in the future. My friends, thank you for joining me today. It was a painty cat and I wish you all the best. Bye-bye.